Kicked in the eye by a horse, premium cataract surgery and pupil repair. This 58-year-old gentleman sustained an injury around his left eye about nine months ago when he was kicked in that area by a horse. On his initial exam on January 2nd, 2024, his best corrected vision from his right eye was 2020 and 2050 from his left eye. Slit lamp exam revealed a one plus nuclear cataract on his right eye and a visually significant cataract on his left eye along with a tonically dilated pupil, which you can see in this image. Examination of his left retina showed a mild epiretinal membrane. He did not have a relative afferent pupillary defect and his visual field testing from each eye was normal. So this patient was bothered by his blurred vision from his left eye and the tonically dilated pupil, which you can see in these photographs, which was causing him uh, excess glare because his pupil was allowing in too much light from his left eye compared to the pupil from his normal right eye. So his objective was to have cataract surgery receive the panoptics lens so he could see far, mid, and near, and to have us try to surgically reduce the size of his pupil in a procedure called pupiloplasty. Our patient has chosen to not receive Valium for his surgery. His anesthesia is topical lidocaine, 1% eye drops. We have placed marks on his cornea prior to performing a limbal relaxing incision with a 600 micron guarded diamond to reduce his preoperative corneal astigmatism. We then infuse 1% non-preserved lidocaine into the anterior chamber to further anesthetize his eye. Endocoat viscoelastic is used to fill the anterior chamber. After our 2.8 millimeter primary incision has been created with a diamond keratome, we use a cystotome to start the capsulorexis and then subsequently complete the capsulorexis with utrata forceps. Hydrodissection is performed with a chain cannula followed by rotation of the nucleus. The cataract is removed with ease followed by irrigation and aspiration of the lens cortex. As we polish the lens capsule, we can see an area of the lens capsule equator that indicates an area of potential loss of zonules, which we would expect in this patient who experienced ocular trauma from the horse kick in the area of this eye nine months earlier. Once we remove our irrigation and aspiration handpiece, we can see the area of zonular loss reveal itself. Viscoelastic is then used to fill the capsular bag followed by insertion of a capsular tension ring to add support in the area of the lost zonules. The posterior surface of the anterior capsule is polished using a spatula followed by insertion of the panoptics lens into the capsular bag. Myostat is then infused into the anterior chamber to induce pupillary meiosis. Unfortunately, the myostat has no effect on this patient's pupil size. We introduce Helon GV viscoelastic into the anterior chamber in preparation for the pupiloplasty procedure. Multiple access ports are made using a one millimeter sapphire blade. We then use these ports as entrance and exit points for our suture needle. We use 10 double arm proline suture with the specifications shown in these images to engage the iris. Ahmed forceps are used to feed the iris tissue into the suture needle. Each pass captures about 120 degrees of the pupil margin. About five to six passes of the needle are made through the iris. Then the needle is removed each time by passing the tip of the needle into a viscoelastic cannula. A second pass is made in a similar manner. Finally, the third pass is made with the second needle of the double-armed tenoproline. The suture is exteriorized through the primary incision created during cataract surgery. We tie the tenoproline in a 3-1-1 knot, which is created outside the eye. Then the knot is brought into the eye to reduce the pupil size, which we target to be about 4 millimeters in diameter. Viscoelastic is removed from the eye. The corneal incisions are hydrated and the incisions are verified to be sealed. Since this patient lives far away, 
We saw him about five hours after surgery for his postoperative exam. This is the appearance of his eye five hours after surgery. You can see and compare the relative diameters of his right normal pupil with his left surgically modified pupil that underwent pupiloplasty. His uncorrected vision from his left eye is now 20-30 far and J1 or 20-25 near. So in my opinion, though his pupil does not look perfect, it does look more similar to his normal right pupil than it did before surgery, and it seems to have an acceptable cosmetic appearance. Thanks so much for watching this video. Until the next one, bye-bye.